Welcome back to the Compound Podcast. This is episode 98. Eight. We're getting way too close to 100 for me having not planned anything. Way I, too close. No, you got something planned. You're just kidding. Okay. Before we start, let me just tell you that this is presented by Parse Rum. I love Parse. You love Parse. Parse Rum can be found at Benny's. It can be found in New York at select liquor stores. It can be found in Texas at Specs. It can be found in Florida at some other liquor stores that I can't remember which ones. I want everybody to know that they can go find Parse and they can go to ParseRum.com to find where they can find Parse. But I've been listening to a few other podcasts and they just do like a five minute block of ads. And it just is so crazy to me because we love Parse too much to do something like that. Like we just want genuinely for you to know about how much we love Parse. Anything to add about planting trees? I was gonna, every time you say that, you take the thing where I'm just going to say, like, yeah, we plant a tree with every bottle. No big deal. And if you care, you'd plant a tree as well. That's all. That's all I have to say. If you cared about the planet, you'd go get a bottle of parsley and plant a tree. You the, amount of just, bottles of, the amount of bottles of rum they gave me, I planted like 40 trees. So no big deal. Which is, you're just a humanitarian, really. Um, you guys were just fighting about how Zach's a gambler now. Would you like to continue with this argument? Zach's full on addicted. To. It's I bad. Would love to. It's bad. He's full on addicted. Tell us the story. It was a Super Bowl, and I accidentally, not accidentally, I'm not even going to say accidentally. I said to myself, hey, you know, I had some cash in my pocket. I was like, hey, you know what? Let's maybe mix in some bets for the Super Bowl. Make it interesting. I have no, I got no dog in the race. I got nothing here. So I put, what, $30 on something? Pretty good turnout. I hit a you bet more than thirty dollars. Cap, cap. You bet more than thirty dollars. Absolute no lie. There's no. no way you're telling the truth because you sent me two, two ticket stubs. So you're yeah, telling me you only I did one two other parlays, one. two parlays for ten dollars each. And I took the over for ten dollars. Cap. Did they all hit? The one did. Just one, one parlay oh, hit. I, I also yeah. was holding Zach's hand through it and like explaining to him what wins well, and I mean, what loses. Aaron Donald, had, Aaron Donald was nowhere to be found until the second half, so I got worried for my well, sack bet. In one of the, Zach's parlays, he had Rams team sacks four plus, which means they need four more, and they got the fourth. And Zach's like, ah, I only need one more now. And I'm like, I no, thought like, a push in a parlay is a loss, but that so. Like I said, if it's four plus or two plus, like that means you need two or more. If right. it said over two point zero, then that two would be a push. Right. Gotcha. I had I had a buddy shout out Billy Banger who was watching with me who had the over on the sacks at I believe six and a half, and at the oh. first half it was one, and two. then it escalated quickly. And I think by the end of the third, he had he had hit the over there but so what was what were what was the total can you tell me all of the parlay things that were in it it got to the point where all he needed was stafford's passing yards and he just kept texting hey how about we throw the fucking ball matt <laughs> it was only ten dollars too it was great um yeah, but it was to win like 110 yeah no i know so the one was the one that lost was obj anytime score hit Cooper Cup, anytime score, hit. Joe Burrow, over, hit. Matthew Stafford, over, hit. The only one that didn't was Jamar Chase, Chase, anytime touchdown. And then the one that did hit was um, Cooper Cup, anytime touchdown. Stafford, over, Rams, over four sacks. And then T. Higgins, over 59 and a half receiving yards, which he got on one play. So thanks for coming. Zach's just a betting guru. So you're just going to be a $10 parlay guy now? You're just going to, like... That is my he limit. He already I, said that he loves the board this weekend for golf. Yeah. That was, that was kind of a joke. Kind of a joke. That's the thing. It's only... Oh, the guy's got the it? itch. No. The guy's got the itch. I refuse to spend money. So as soon as I lose, I'm out. I've been telling That's what Dakota... I mean. like, keep, keep the money in there and use it. Dakota's, Dakota's the gambling expert. He needs to be needs to be telling the people what to do. How did you do on your Super Bowl bets? Do you want to tell us? Um, I was pretty much even as far as the player prop stuff went. What hurt me was I had one. It was 10 to win 770 on T. Higgins to score two touchdowns, which he did, and OBJ to score two touchdowns, which he scored one, was tearing up the defense, and then got hurt and was not able to score a second, which was upsetting. But um, I was pretty much even on my player props, but I bet 
a decent amount on the Rams to win as soon as the fourth quarter started. Just to bet on Matty Stafford. It's kind of scary how much can be done on an app. Oh, the, it's not usually that crazy. Like, I was looking oh. through all the apps yesterday, and I'm like, these are – you could bet on See, I couldn't Sean find McVay it. itches butt. <laughs> I couldn't find any, like, Gatorade cooler ones. I couldn't find any of the cool props. Yeah, I had I had some money on tails. That hurt. But I'll tell you what, Billy Jean, she gave it a good flip. Like you usually like people like to bet heads or tails, like, and then you get like the flips that just kind of fall out of the hand. Like she flung that thing. What was the uh, what was the national anthem over and under? Did the I over hit or the under? That. The over, the over hit. I didn't. Hit, I didn't hit? see it either though because I was watching the golf. I had heard. I had heard that the person singing the anthem was historically a low time. She was a. Uh, the overs hit like the last 10 years in a row. She was going to be the one that might break the streak. Yeah. And I don't know how to say her name, Zach. Do you I didn't you? see it. I was, I was watching like, golf because those guys, I was also watching golf. Those guys just decided to par 18 every single, like they're this not is a good, golfers. this is a good segue. This is a good segue. I was also watching the golf. I was flipping back and forth for the beginning, the Phoenix open, which was absolutely electric and went into a three hole playoff. Right. That's right. Three holes. Mm-hmm. The fact that that actually overlapped with the Super Bowl was kind of tough because then you had to make the decision. Because if you're a golf fan, that was absolutely electric. I, you know, I will say one thing. There is what if TV and everybody knows that the scorecards are correct. Don't go into the score and in the into the scores tent and count up the scores. Make sure you sign your scorecard correctly when the Super Bowl's on. Get on the AT T and let's get it moving. Nobody yeah. has a fucked up scorecard. Well, you know what's kind of fucked is that you still have to sign your scorecard correct and do the whole thing or else you get penalized or you get DQ'd, actually. That's what it's I'm like, saying. It's like, 2022. Let's, that's what you know, I'm whatever. Like, it's all on video. Like, that's what I mean. Like, hey, guys, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Let's put the golf behind. We already have guys taking off their shirts on the greens. We can get away with the rules of golf right now. Let's just keep it moving. Okay, quick shout out to our guy, Joel Damon, who was in contention at Pebble at the AT&T put up a really good fight and then was not in contention this weekend, made but the cut, he though, got paid, made the cut, extra, got paid, which we love. We love when our friends get paid and he went to, uh, and he's in Arizona. He's a, he's a, uh, uh, Scottsdale guy lives in Phoenix area. He, um, put out on Twitter. He was playing with Harry. Uh, what's his last name? Higgs. Harry Higgs. Higgs. And he put out on Twitter. He was like, if somebody, if he's like, I'm going to get Harry to take off his shirt, you know, enough retweets. I'm going to get Harry to take off his shirt on 16. It got 7,000 retweets. Okay. And for reference, the post before that was six retweets. And he, Higgs makes a long birdie on 16. Crowd yeah. starts to go create. It was a par putt. It was, it was a par putt. It was a par saving putt. But yes. Okay. I'm sorry. It, it was, was a long, long putt. It was, it it was, was like a 10 par putt save. Yeah. They drained on 16. He flashes the crowd. And then before you know it, Joel's got the shirt over the head. It was it was awesome. It was an electric atmosphere. It's a great tournament. It's great for golf. Anybody that says that's not good for golf, I don't agree with. And I'm a, I'm a pretty totally. traditionalist. I wear pants every See, time I play. I said to Zach, and I said it the first time when Ryder got the hole in, the hole in one, is like, Throwing all those beer cans out there, I thought was a little much. Like I thought it was like cool, but I was like, "That's just not the a first mess. one." No, but the thing is, they were people. But then you have the people that take it too far, and they're trying to throw the beer cans at the guys. And I'm like, yes. "Okay, I'm like saying. a beer shower is different than throwing." Yeah, it. no, but I have no problem with that. It was also the first home one there in years. Mm-hmm. It was also Since late Francesco in the after- Molinari. Right. It was also late in the afternoon on 16. What do you expect? But oh, yeah. then. That's really another one. They hit, I forgot who the guy's name. Oh, Ortiz. Ortiz. Okay. Which is again, keep going crazy. It's awesome. But then JT chipped in for birdie and they had to do it. And even JT was like, what are we doing? Yeah. And they did it. I mean, they did it when those guys took their shirts off too. And they were throwing stuff out there. It's a little bit of a delay game. Maybe not the best. I I like the uh, old misc or is that Mississippi state esque beer shower in the stands. Uh, as opposed to the actually throwing things onto the green. I don't know if they should make that a tradition, but the entire tournament's great for golf. The amount of people, 
that were on 18 still watching the playoff on Super Bowl Sunday. I thought it was incredible. The ovation they gave to the dude, the young dude who was leading the 54 hole lead. He was, he was on a, he was on a sponsorship exemption. He wasn't even supposed to be there. He has 11 PGA tour starts and two 54 hole leads. Did you see, did you read the story about him? No, there was a story about him. Um, I don't know how long ago it was, but he's like on the range hitting purposeful shanks. So like John Rahm is down. I don't on believe the you. Side. I don't believe you. That's oh what God, I do, this, bro. <laughs> That's what I do when I golf too. That's why I do it. It's on purpose. No, so yeah, he'll, really. say, he'll like, he said that he would make it look like he's like, he has no idea what's going on. And one of them was against John Rahm and John Rahm's looking around like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And he just does it to get into his guy's head. I don't believe that. Oh, hang on. It is incredible. Send to- that to Tom so he can send it to the people so that they believe you because I don't. He he played really well, but like I can't imagine there's like that tournament come down the stretch and then you know he he hits a good shot and it's just a hair offline. He goes in the water on 17. Then before you know it, the other two Shevler birdies four last five. Misses that putt on 18, leaves it out to the right, and then wins in the playoff. But you can tell that hole, I think we've all played this golf course, except for Dakota, you have not played. Zach, have you, you've played the stadium course, haven't you? Yes. I have. Dakota? Don't insult me. You've played the stadium course? Yes, don't insult me. I thought in our text the other day you said you hadn't. I haven't played, so it's okay. Are you lying to me? <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm not positive if I have or haven't. Fuck. I know I haven't when the stands are up, but I forget. Okay. I know I've played the other one. The other uh Yeah, we played it together. Yes. Maybe so, I haven't played the stadium one. No, regardless, 18 is it's kind of a long carry over the water on the left and great the bunkers hole. those great, great hole. hole. The bunkers on the they actually 16 16's not a great hole without the stands up, but it's great with the stands up. 17 is actually a good hole. 18 is actually a good hole. 15 is actually a good hole. But the 18, you know, your bailout is right. But for some reason, when these guys, because there's been a playoff last couple of years, and when these guys get into the playoff situation, like their bailout is kind of like right into the bunker, like this crazy bunker area. And then you're watching the playoff, and these guys are just over and over blasting balls into horrible eyes. I mean, the over by those pew, bunkers, the church pew bunkers on the left, they're not very friendly looking. And if that's water, so you're like super fucked if you go over there. But it is, it's, it was fun to watch those dudes have to compete and like make pars to stay alive, basically. At the end, I, what I'll say, I, I want to go back to hole sixteen real quick is I'm okay with all the beer being thrown on there for hole in ones only just because there's been, there was the 10th and 11th ever hole in ones on 16. And it's been seven years since like, like it never happens. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so when it does, like I'm okay with that, but I don't need to chip in. I don't need to chip in like, Oh, like throw all the beer. I would like to know when the last time there was two in a tournament, two and one. It was tiger, tiger and Steve Stricker. But it was the same thing, round three and round four. Can you tell me a year on that? 97. So that was 25 when years. Like just a comfortable nine iron here. Yeah. And there was Whoa! actually... At, and at that's that when point, Tiger gave like the raise the yeah, roof. Yeah. <laughs> at that point, there was actually no stands, right? They had... No. They had like... I think they had some like down the side, but it wasn't near as big of like a grandstand. Mm-mm. And now it's a four-story grandstand with suites. You see, before people, you know it, it's going to be a permanent structure. People camp out. Like people were there at like 3 a.m. I saw on Twitter. It's a crazy. Have you guys ever been to it? Yeah, I went two years yeah. ago. To I didn't go to whole 16 just because like you would have had to wait in line for like hours. But like it's a sick atmosphere. I've gone. I've gone like three or four times actually. I went in uh, 19, and we have you know we end up in one of the things on the side of of 16, and it's a it's just a crazy. It's a deal. Where you actually you can go there and really see no golf. Like you can have mm-hmm. been there for eight hours and have seen like a golf shot. It's a pretty crazy, it's a pretty crazy place and atmosphere. Cause even that course, there's very good places to watch golf. There's places where you can sit and see three or four holes and see some golf shots. But if you're on 16 or 17, you can really end up 
hanging out and seeing but it's a party you know, it's uh, literally a party though like, it's an it's epic party insane. it's an epic weekend for the guys that like, we all know some people that we've met over the years who live in arizona full-time and you meet them because you spend some time out there and you then you become friends with some people who live in arizona and for that week they come up for air on monday and they're like what the fuck just happened because it's like four days of concerts i think they even started earlier this year where it's like basically six days of concerts at the bird's nest it's just the whole thing is long days and a mess uh and i'm actually i'm happy that they've now scheduled it closer to spring training to meet up with the super bowl so that because the nfl went a week longer they switched it to the super bowl next year it is the phoenix open and the super bowl both in Arizona. arizona yeah that's not going to be crazy. It's going to be just pretty tame, pretty normal. So I definitely won't be there, but it's... Uh, I was going to well, say, actually, it'll be, I don't think, think everyone like flying in for spring. Well, Zach, you same. can't go. I'm saying... Oh, I, I guess I you're not there, a pitcher like, catcher. You could go. I'm saying I don't think I would oh, want to go. Like, that is so uh, many people. Yeah, but it's like if you, like, just do it all. Like, say, I'm yeah, going yeah. all in, it'd be insane. Like, exactly. You can't go into it and be like... Oh, like, I just want to go watch some golf. Like, you won't have fun. Like, you have to be ready to it just be a shit show. Can I give a quick thing that's like a baseball guy, a little bit of a negative spin on this is when we go to book housing for next spring training, Ugh. we're going to be fucked because that Better first week there. is going to be the Super Bowl Phoenix Open medley. And you're not going to be imagine able to having a team, imagine having a team in Arizona, you bums. I'd rather, be in Lake, I'd rather be in Lakeland for sure. Yeah, that sounds like the best place to actually hang out. Speaking of having a team, heard baseball teams aren't profitable when it comes to like the stock market versus baseball teams. It's like, yeah, that was weird. And then something, what, what was the percentage that it's up since when you buy a team? Like 660? I think it was like 600% over the last 20 years. If you're, if you're counting, if you're the person, if you're the type of person that's counting. That's not I, to mention I, I, all the not, other. I know I'm not very good with numbers, so I just yeah. I don't I'm not too sure. Not to mention all the other stuff that you own or have the advantage to as part of a the 30 owners. Yeah. But if we want to talk about if we want to be the number two labor pod at John Boy Media, because we know that Talk and Jake and uh, Jimmy are the and Trevor are the number one labor pod. We you could easily two. you could easily make us the number one by just like breaking inside talks, like give inside info on stuff people aren't yeah. supposed to know, and be like, "Here's what's actually being said in these meetings." Then I would be yeah. Then I would also be like blackballed and be outside. And then I'd never know anything again. So we'd be the number <laughs> one labor pod for a week. True, but we should talk about it. We should comment on it. It came MLB, back to the table. MLB came back with a counter. It was a counter. Is it a good one? It was counter. It was <laughs> they did it. They they, they did it. Something. They countered. Rob said it was going to be a good one, but they countered. You know, uh, it's never good when the first thing before any details or were players were very underwhelmed. But after what they did, trying to get the uh, mediator or whatever, like you knew they weren't going to come back and be like, ah, here's everything you guys wanted. Like, fine, we'll do it. it like it was also like, kind of a crazy sequence because it was like. Yes, we'll counter. Just kidding. Here's a mediator. Just kidding. We have our meetings. Just now we're going to counter. And that was like a wasted week, which was awesome for everybody. And then uh, it was underwhelming. But, there, you know, there's things in there. There's small moves, but there's it's always small moves. And you wonder when small moves turns into, hey, we got to. You got to make some actual moves so we can get something done. It's like it's almost it's, like it's the middle of February. It's almost it like it, it feels like it. I know it, it can't be the middle. It's of February. not. No it's problem. like the Super Bowl happened, the Phoenix Open happened. Like I I'm know. To be honest, for a second, I thought you were like joking, and I was like, no, Zach, like it, it, it is the middle of February. That's the scary part, to Dakota. You know what it feels like? Do you remember yeah. when we? You remember when we were sitting around back in 2020? I miss and it. We, I actually thought of it the other day. I actually miss it. I was actually, you know, who texted me? This is a little sidebar to everything that we're talking about. Is T texted me oh, yeah. and asked if uh, I was going to be in town for the for the uh, Phoenix Open because they were there and they were going. So shout out T and the origination. Of the you conference. can't go there without everybody. So it's a good point. It's illegal, actually. Yeah, <laughs> he wouldn't let you there without us. 
Yeah. But I was thinking about how similar, how eerily similar it is to remember in 2020 when we sat down and we were like, yo, imagine if baseball came back on July 4th, Mm -hmm. like if baseball came back July 4th of 2020, everybody's, you know, being able to be outside grilling hot dogs, not sure what's going on, but like baseball's being played. Like imagine the scene in all these cities, like what it would be like. The same thing is like, imagine if football ended and then baseball was there. Like imagine if football ended and then baseball was like, Hey, phew. no, don't, no, no, We figured it out. We're all right. We're going to, we'll be there. Bro. I literally, that's what I thought was going to happen, especially after what Rob said when he's like, yeah, Saturday's a, it's a good, good proposal. I was like, Oh, this is sick. They're going to have it right before the Super Bowl. We're going to agree and we are going to go. Yeah. And you know, when it's not like, it's not the final numbers, like they're still the tough part is like the negotiating part of it is all right, here's our shit numbers. Let's get to something that's realistic. But like the fact that the, the CBT was, you know, the same with no increase in the second year. And then you're looking at $2 million increases for the last three. It's like, the way the revenue is going in the sport, that's just crazy. That's just absolutely crazy to think that by the end of the next five-year term, we'd be at, you know, I think it was 220 was the top end or 222 was the top end of the CBT. Like five years from now, that's going to be the top can I, payroll can I in honest, baseball. Can I be honest with you? I have, it's, this sounds like a foreign language. So I'm sure some listeners don't know what CBT means. I have no clue. Okay. Think so the luxury are- tax, luxury yeah. tax. Okay. The luxury tax, so like is the highest team payroll that you could have mm-hmm. before you start getting taxed. The way it's set right now that MLB is proposing is that it would be 214. Is that up or down? It's up from what it up. is, but by a couple million. Our proposal is like 260, like we're at like 250. Yeah. 260. Uh, they said 214 with it then in 2023 being 214 again. 2024 being, I believe it was 218, 220, 222. Whereas the Mets this year are going to be at like 250 or 280. Can you, Tom, help me? And the Dodgers last year were at 250. So, like, we're talking about teams want to spend more money, teams want to compete. And you're saying that's a nice idea, but we're going to, if you want to compete, you're going to be penalized. If you want to go out and get the best players in baseball, we're going to penalize you. And not only are we going to take money from you in the form of taxes, but we're also going to take draft picks away from you for trying to win. And I understand raising that will obviously help guys make more money, but isn't the whole point of it to keep like the competitive balance, like so that the rich teams don't get richer and the poor teams get poorer. Cause like the teams that aren't good still aren't going to get anywhere near that luxury tax anyway. Like it's not like, Oh, we can spend more money. Well, we're still not going to, and we'll still be, yeah, not but it is really the luxury tax numbers important for. Yeah. It's like an, the Dodgers. Yankees, it's important. Tubs. Yes. But it's also important for the teams that want to butt up to it, but are too mm-hmm. afraid to go over it. So like the Cubs are an example yes. of like, we were over it in, I believe 17 and 18 or 17, 18, 19, or some combination of that, and then had to come back under so we wouldn't get penalized with draft picks. You know, there's teams like that. The Tigers, for a number of years, ran up into it when they had all the, all the boys on that there's, team. But then there's other teams that just say, like the Dodgers, that just say, ah, fuck it. Yes. Yeah, give but us they, all the players. But even, even, the, even those teams had to reset. The Yankees came yeah. under in, what was it, 19? The Yankees came back under. 19. Because the penalties are so steep if you stay over for three years that those teams will inevitably have to come back under for one year and then you lose uh, a team in the free agent market. So, like, the penalties being steep really messes things up. And then you have a number of teams, whether it's – there's, like, let's call it 10 teams in the middle who any given year could butt up against it. No Tigers. I mean, the Cubs should be at the high end. I was like, kind of Cubs right now. Yeah, but the Cubs should be at the high end most of the time. Then you have like the Braves and, you know, the the Cardinals will butt up against it and the Angels. And like you have all these teams who will butt up to it. 
And then it's kind of a deterrent once you actually get to that number. Tom, tell me about what the salaries are this year for some of those teams. Yeah, this is obviously projected right now, and a ton of guys haven't signed, but projected three teams would already be basically at 214. Uh, the Mets are at 230, basically 236. The Dodgers are at 214 and change, and the Yankees are at 212 and change. Who was that last team? The New York Yankees. Yankees. Uh, and then also in the top 10 are the, the Padres, White Sox, Red Sox, Phillies, Angels, Houston, and St. Louis. Uh, the majority of those, the top eight, are all above 160. And again, that's without a decent number. A lot of free agents are still on the board. Yeah, that's and- the, that's my other thing about like people wanting a deal done. It's not like a deal's done. Baseball's tomorrow. It's like a deal's done. Going to need probably two, three weeks to sign all these guys. Like there's so Same many guys they'll sitting still, out there. They'll still go to camp and then just sign them throughout camp. I'm, but I'm saying camp can't start. Friday, if they sign a deal tomorrow, like camps got to wait. To, right. Like you got to do Rule Five draft still. You got to do arbitration. I mean, you can do arbitration cases in camp. You can do arbitration like, cases in you're camp. You're rushing you a lot draft, of stuff. You have to do a draft and you have to get guys signed because if you have four weeks, you can't wait two or three weeks to sign guys. You got to sign. And the guys thing right is, away. you're putting those free you're putting those free agents in a bad spot where it's like, oh, you better sign. The season starts in two weeks. This is your offer. Take it or leave it. Like the teams then go into power on signing guys i, so I don't like know if we, i don't know if we I could be wrong but that's what i think i don't know if we brought this up um i might have already but scott a friend of the pod scotty if Ross, brought up a good point if we get to the point where we st- we're losing games is like inevitable and it's gonna happen we're gonna have to negotiate like again like we did in 2020 with how many games we're gonna play what's a full year service time what is the salary what how many or what percentage are we gonna get for pay that's going to be a whole another or- ordeal in itself. I think the other thing we should talk about too is that this affects like every single kind of player, right? This is affecting minor leaguers now. We can talk about Jeff Passan right before this podcast we recorded, talked about uh, MLB is looking to now cut the domestic, I think, reserve list, I believe is what it's called. Basically, yeah. with the list of minor leaguers from 180 down to 150. So that's like another 30 spots they're trying to get rid of. Um, and then you're talking about, you know, guys around the fringes as well. You know, Jake talked about last week, one of my favorite guys, Mike Talkman. He was a guy out of a contract signed in Korea because that's your guy. Undra- uh, right now, if you're a free agent kind of on the fringes looking to get into a big league camp and make the team, like how difficult does that look right now, knowing you have to wait for all the top end guys to sign? Then you have to go find who wants you still after that, then get into camp late and then try to make an MLB roster. I mean, there's the, uh, so not only is it affecting the stars and the middle league guys. It's affecting the minor leaguers and affecting the guys in the fringes as well. I mean, every single kind of player is really being heavily impacted, I think, right now. And then, so also that proposal. So, like you said, the whole, you know, they're trying to cut 30 more guys, trying to save money. Yet, one of the proposals for um, league um, league minimum was like 630,000, but the team could pay more if they wanted to. Let me, yeah, they're going to want to pay, what they're gonna gonna wanna pay okay. more. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Can I say something on that? Yes. Please. So the initial issue was that they had proposed a tiered minimum system, okay, which would basically promote teams to when you get to two years of service and you're 50K more expensive, when you get to three years of service and you're 150K more expensive than the young guy, and you get swapped out for the new model to save a little bit of coin. That was a bad system. But under that proposal, they had also proposed that those were flat salaries and there was no adjustment. In the current system, you get a raise every year. Right. It might be five grand, it might be 50 grand. You know, Chris Bryant won the MVP. Every team had a system that they would use. Okay, it didn't make any sense. And actually with the Cubs, I, you had a chance to not sign your contract. You had basically the chance to say, I don't agree. You can pay me whatever you want, but I don't agree with your number. I did that my first year because Chris Bryant hit 26 homers, had a great year, won the MVP, you know, but he got a million bucks year two. The Cubs paid him almost double the minimum to say, hey, you won the MVP, you did a great job. Thank you. Here's a million bucks. I was in a situation where I got a small raise, but I hit 24 homers and had 
350 at bats or whatever I had my rookie year. And they said, Hey, here's your race. It's, you know, whatever it was, 15 grand or whatever. And I said, well, I got half the at bats at 24 pumps. You know, if I would have played in September, I could have set all these rec. I could have done some stuff. And, you know, I think I deserve more than that number. You know, we went back and forth and, it, you know, it was fine. It's not a big deal. But then you just you have the opportunity to basically say, like, I don't agree with this. So you do get small incremental raises where, you know, you can make fifty thousand dollars more than the minimum by the time you're in your third year of, of minimum. But they were proposing a system where that didn't even exist. Right. Uh, OK, but, I understand. I, I understand. But I'm saying what team is going to want to just be like, hey, yeah, we're going to pay more. Yes. So, but it would be, that'd be, that'd be great, but it would be a system where you had one minimum that was higher and then teams would be under the same system where you would get a small raise. But wasn't it like substantially higher though, like a hundred, a hundred thousand dollars more. So if you just did the current system, if you just took the salary, the, the minimum, and then used the used inflation to get to the number, that's usually how we would do it. Um, you know, they were marginally over that number, ten, fifteen thousand dollars over that number. Um, oh, Seven twenty-five yeah. for two to three years. Yeah, that was in the tiered system. They they raised yeah, that was the, the, the third right. year, but we wanted right. a system that had one minimum instead of three. Right. Because you know that those that would be those guys would start getting swapped out in year three for right. the guys that right. were making you know, six twenty, And that's why we're in the predicament where we are now, where 70% of the league is making under a million dollars. Correct. Which is kind of, again, we've said it before. That's insane. As far as a percentage and like number of like service time for. Yes. 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 Well, I'm sure if you asked, like if you went on the street and asked people what percent of major leaguers make under a million dollars, I mean, what do you think people would say? That's what everybody, that's Zero. what like, everybody yeah. is saying though you know, oh, baseball is the richest sport, like whatever. Yeah, but you, it's because of the guys like Trout who are making close to $400 million, and they'll see a tweet and they'll say, hey, hey, kid, play baseball when you're younger, which is like, yeah, of course, but. Yeah, one of the most frustrating things was seeing the way that social media was manipulated in the last two off seasons where, you know, whether it's Fox, MLB, Fox, MLB, or MLB, or whoever was at the Instagram account. And every time there was a big deal, it was like the biggest deal in the history of the game of baseball. The biggest deal for a sub two player in the history of the game of baseball. The biggest $300 million deal you've ever seen. And it's like, well, yeah, thank you. There's five of those, but there's 1500 players that have been up and down this year. And all of those guys, you know, Casey Sadler had a great quote. You see uh, that tweet. story on his Twitter? Yeah, he had a great tweet. Sadler was with the Cubbies uh, a few years ago. And, you know, he's a dude that he's been a great reliever, but up and down his whole career. And he finally stuck on with whoever he stuck Mariners. on. After, Mariners after he left us. And he, you know, he – told his story on Twitter of him and his wife and being paycheck to paycheck and, you know, working three jobs in the off season and the whole deal. And it's like, that's the more common story than the, the biggest deal of baseball I've ever seen. And that's the thing. It's like, people see that. And it's like, he's one of hundreds that like did that or that, are doing that right now. That's like that the is majority super common. Yes. And that's crazy. the absolute and total majority. Mm -hmm. It's insane. The dudes that you hear the stories about that are the the you know the high pick, the first, the prospect that got to the big leagues, the stock that got an early deal, signed another deal. John Johnny Les used to say it all the time. The young dudes, hundred million dollar contracts don't grow on trees. You guys think because you play with a guy who's got a hundred million bucks because you see it in the press because that's the story that everybody's going to get a hundred million dollar deal by the time you're done. It's like there's been thirty of those in the history of the game. In a hundred years, you know, how many hundred million dollar contracts have ever been given out? You know, yes. 40 now, 50 now by the time uh, in the last two years, but they are becoming more contracts. prevalent as well. Yes. So that makes because, it seem yes. like it's all the time. Yeah. Because the game has doubled its revenue in the last 10, 15 years, right? Like hundred million dollar deals are more out there, but in the history of the game of baseball, 
you know, if there's 50 of those and there's been, what are we at? 11,000 players. Not quite. We're between 10 and 11,000 players all time. And there's been 50 hundred million dollar deals. It's like how many guys have been in and out of the game given 10 years of their life to the game of baseball and walked away with after taxes less than a million bucks with, you know, what do you do next? Do you go mulch yards? It's like, that's the, that's the deal. You just gave your whole life to throwing or hitting a baseball. And again, people are going to sit at home and be like, Oh, but you're still making half a million dollars in a year. And it's like, okay, but like, that's not the point. Like it's billionaires paying half a million dollars. And then you think of all the minor league guys making a thousand, a paycheck, 700, a paycheck. And it's like, Oh, we didn't talk about that either. I don't know if you saw in um, how they said that they weren't going to pay. They had the MLB came out with, I guess they were, they went to court over it about paying minor leaguers in spring training. And they said, I forgot the, like the, the words that they use. What, 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 like, what do you mean? We get paid. We get $25 a day. I don't know what you're talking about. We're loaded for food and living and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was like, yeah. So they're actually, what it, Tom, you might know it better than me. It was like, yeah, they're actually trainees, so they and they they make out better than we do. Yeah, they were basically like the the value of our training is like worth the like whatever they're getting. I mean, it, it's can we talk about for one second? I mean, all I, I worked in the minors. All of you guys have played in the minors. How much would it actually cost Major League Baseball and the organizations to fully fund? the minor leagues the way they should 10, 15, it's, like it's come, out, it's come out before. Like if you paid a guy minimum wage, it is not that much more money. No. And, and how much would it be to put them up in decent living conditions? Right. I mean, we've all talked about the six guys who are living in one apartment who are sleeping on the floor and all the different situations. I mean, how much does that stunt the development of guys across the minors? How many guys might've made it if they had been able to sleep, they've been able to eat. You know, you talk about the, the the bonus babies and the guys who make it. How many of those guys make it? Because, hey, they're able to go afford a nice meal. They're able to go afford a salad instead of McDonald's for the third time this week. I mean, it really, it drives me up the wall. Someone who lived it with those minor league guys, that like, this is a discussion at all. I mean, the fact that we're discussing not having a season, and that seems like at least to me, and I know you guys know more than I do, that's on the table. And this is still not even really a factor. Like this is, we're fighting for the basic economic rights of major leaguers and the minor leagues. This is still basically like it's whatever they can get. It's insane. I mean, it, it, we're talking about, it would cost major league baseball, $10 million a team to fully fund their organizations and produce better players. Something you think they'd want to do and they don't want to do it. It blows my mind. Can we get Tom, can we get Tom in the courtroom, please? Tom, I Tom, love your the, passion. The funniest part is you said that, and you're like, we're talking about like the major leaguers, and what comes out about the minor leaguers? Let's cut thirty more guys. They're saying, you know what? Even less of them. Let's 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 actually sh- let's shrink the game that we're trying yeah. to grow. Let's shrink. It's crazy. It. That's what I don't. I, I'll tell you my story. How I became a baseball fan. I grew up. I have a brother with special needs. I grew up in a family where, you know, we we were not living paycheck to paycheck, but we didn't have money to go to the Yankees, you know, all the time. We're able to get minor league season tickets for, I think, $700 a season up uh, Hudson Valley Renegades up by Zach. That's what made me a baseball fan. That's what made me. I started working for that team. Then I worked in the minors, went all around the country covering baseball. And now I work for a baseball company. Minor league baseball made me a baseball fan, employee, and now in whatever you want to call me, a content creator. And the fact that we want to take away minor league baseball, we already took away 30 some 42 teams. We took away, you know, in the Chicago area, we took away the Kane County Cougars who were drawing, you know, 5,000 people a game, gone. It, it just never made any sense to me why we want to kill the game at these lower levels where that's where people get hooked on baseball. And at the same time, we're, we're not only getting rid of the minor leagues, we're not going to pay the minor league players. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense at all across the board on any spectrum. Does anybody want to start with this rant? Because I will start if you guys don't want to start. Take it. I I think I think it's fucking insane. But I also it's crazy because the places that play in the minor leagues, it's not like like being in the big leagues and having to pay your own rent in the city is one thing, right? You're making great money. You have to pay your own rent. If you get sent down, maybe you get stuck with the bill. 
whatever. It's fine. You're making good money. It's, it's different than any other business because if you're a consultant in any other business, there you don't have to do that. <laughs> it's fine. But we're talking about Myrtle Beach. We're talking about South Bend. We're talking about, like you said, Kane County, Hudson Valley. What's rent there? What is it to go out and make sure you secure? Give guys roommates. Guys in the, are used to roommates. You have to secure, what, 15 apartments? Roommates, not sharing a room, by the way, because that was a yeah, roommate, Zach sent yeah. something that they said something about sharing a room. That is very they different said you than had to share roommates. a room. That was one of the proposals. I guess it came from, you know how MLB said they were going to pay for living? That's inhumane. Bro. That's, I had to make sure there, that was clarified. Not sharing a room, but yes, having like an apartment with two bedrooms. 100%. But you're saying they wanted a one bed and they're they putting wanted a one four guys in there. Like two guys in a room. Of course they did because it's they're all that's the fucking crazy thing. I don't want to get too heated. I don't want to say something I shouldn't say. The crazy they thing about wanna, this whole thing. They don't want to make it seem like, you know, we're complaining about playing baseball for a living. It's not like that. It's it's and, like and there's there's some parts of the minor league experience that are great stories and they last forever. And the fact that, you know, you slept on the floor and I moved into a crazy place wherever I did and slept on the floor at Myrtle Beach after being a first. Like, those are things you'll never forget. After being a what? What? After but those a, are things. First round after, or what? after signing that 3.5 mil <laughs> check. That's gonna it was just it three. It was you just made up three. for that by living in a hotel for three months in Iowa instead of living with me and Zach. So but I that's, not, that's not the point. Continue. I didn't get invited. But in the other guy that stayed with you. We're not well. going back to this. But continue. the other guy that stayed with you made it to the big leagues. <laughs> I'm not going to say Oops. anything about my experience. But. Like, it's not, it wouldn't be that challenging and it wouldn't be that big of a deal to actually do the right thing for the minor league guys. But you have a group that is fighting against these dudes because they feel like they don't have enough representation to fight for themselves. So it's an easy target and goes after these guys. And who are the, who picks up the pizzas every time? Literally every time there's an issue, anytime there's a work stoppage, anytime the minor league guys get fucked with, the big league players pick up the slack. The big league players, like Jason Hayward, the guys that have been fucking paid in this game, they end up taking care of the minor league guys. They end up making sure they're okay. Those are the dudes that do it, okay? Not the teams that should be making sure that these guys have the right uh, facilities or food or whatever to play the game. And we're also talking about a system where – more often than not, it's the Latin American dudes that are more abused than anybody else in the minor league system, and they're not looked out for at all. Not at home, not in the in the facilities where they're training at 14 years old, and not in the States, and it's messed up. No, I mean, imagine, I mean, so a lot of these guys move from a foreign country, have never been here before. They don't get a translator. You know, this isn't like the big leagues where if you come across, you get a translator and the, even in the big leagues, they didn't have Spanish language translators, I believe, till 2016, 2017. But these guys play in the minors, and it's like a pitching coach, right? I mean, I'm sure you guys can all think of the guys on your teams who had to translate for the players. Imagine living in a country where you don't speak the language. You're living with five other guys, and the only thing you have in common is your language. And you could grow up in five very different parts of the world, but you all speak Spanish, and now you're all just – that's all. You're grouped together. I, I, it, it drives me insane because beyond the moral argument, there's obviously the moral argument of these conditions are inhumane for people to live in. And sure, Ian, it's a great, you know, you, in plenty of big leaguers talk about, oh, these are the experiences that made me, you know, into a big leaguer. That shouldn't have to be the case. But beyond that, you would think from a team's point of view, just getting the most out of their development process, they would want to spend the money to increase their living condition, to make these players in the put them in the best possible position to succeed and at every time every turn they're willing to cut the corner to save 500 000, whatever the amount of money is and it just it doesn't even make sense to me from a biz if you're just looking at it from a business standpoint it doesn't even make sense beyond the moral argument can i make a quick uh point here if you have a kid let's, uh, let's not talk about the latins for a second if you have a kid that comes from college baseball at SEC, ACC, 
even where where I played, you take a kid from that level, we're in the Big Ten too, same deal. You take a kid from that level and they go to a minor league facility, they've just been down, they've just gone from college baseball to professional baseball and then been downgraded as far as hotels, facilities, food, care. It's like, what? How the fuck is that possible? Now, don't get me wrong. The Cubs have an unbelievable spring training facility. Like the spring training facility is top notch. And then you go to the next place and you're like, what the fuck? South Bend's really cool too, but I I was going to say, I think we are very spoiled with the the Cubs had great facilities. We don't have any, like every stop was. was You guys can think about all the Midwest, all the Midwest league. Oh, we, we went to some places. But yeah, but the difference is like if you're an athlete, like at Cincinnati, here's a perfect example. You go to Cincinnati, okay, you go in the athlete dorms, you have four guys in two bedrooms with your own bathroom. You eat the athlete, you know, a lot of we didn't have an athlete dining hall, but a lot of places have an athlete dining hall. Like you have these things where there's structure and there's like help. Like we get to the minor leagues, it's like we talked about this all the time. It's like here, Three days, go find an apartment in the fucking sticks because you're making whatever a week. Like you said, if they just reserve, and so with the Cubs at least, I don't. I mean, I don't know if we had it with the Tigers. Um, go at the end of at the end of every year, we had like a survey. You know, you would talk about the coaches or the experience, and it was like, what is one thing that we can change as an organization? Nobody put pay, nobody put anything else. It was always help with living at the beginning of the year. Like put away either apartments or talk to somebody. Could you, like you're telling me that if somebody from the Chicago Cubs or Detroit Tigers said, "Hey, I'm with the so and so," you know, we would love to buy out or rent out some apartments from April to October. Like you don't think that they would try to fifteen build that of them. And, and here's my issue: they try to help, like when you have the meetings before you break camp. But who do they put in charge of it? They put your athletic trainer in trainer. charge of helping find living. That's not their job. They shouldn't have to do that either. Like, it's not like, like they, they, and they try their best, but it's like, what's this guy supposed to do? Like, he's got to figure out his own living and deal with his own stuff and be a trainer at the same time. Like he shouldn't have to help us find apartments. Like they should dedicate somebody to do that. We always say like beginning of the year, I mean, for the whole year, but like, that beginning of the year, you can't talk to the trainers. They're worried about sizes. They're worried oh. about numbers. They're worried about everything. The flight going from there, guys driving. And then they have a meeting and they have to hand out papers and and like brochures that I hear, here are some spots to go. You have three days in the hotel. And after that, it's on your own. Two worst jobs in professional sports. The minor league baseball athletic trainer followed by the minor league baseball PA announcer. Or broadcaster. Those are the two worst jobs in professional sports. Again, I don't want to sound naive or anything because if teams have tried that and then the complexes have told them they go fuck themselves, but I just don't think that that's the case. Um, Also going to be honest, I think, I mean, I'm not going to name an organization, but I think X organization could buy an apartment building in Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania for I mean, they have, you know, I'm what do you mean you're not going to name the organization? <laughs> you know, I, I, you I, all right, well, I'm name, I think, plays I, in think Scranton? <laughs> I think the Yankees, I think the Yankees could afford to buy a, a apartment complex in Scranton, Wilkes-Barre. I don't think that's going to bankrupt the organization. By the way, no, I don't know. I, I'm just going to say, I, I love where you're at right now. Tom. I'm Tom starting it, his Tom. own pod and he's just fucking bulldozing. Hey, and by the way, that put like, in Toledo, the um, AAA for the Tigers, we basically – a bunch of guys kind of stayed in the same apartment complex together. It is a blast. Every night, guys are going back and playing cards with each other. Like, it's you are crazy. literally staying in the same complex. Yeah, you get enough of each other. Sometimes you don't want to be with somebody. But, like, you walk two, two houses – or two doors down, and there's five guys in there watching a game playing cards. Like, it's fun. You don't want to be 15, 20 minutes away from each other. Yeah, and especially like, you know, I'm trying to think of, of some of the stops we had, but like, if you're in Knoxville, uh, kind of where Double uh, A was for the Cubbies, like, you either had guys in Knoxville or Sevierville, so you were 35 minutes 
from guys sometimes depending on on where guys chose to stay because there's two oh, yeah. different spots to stay and you know like if everybody's in the same spot those are the guys you come up with like the team before me in in double a was vogelback almora Schwarber daddy bruno i'm trying to think who else but they had a group of dudes that all played together in double a dominated one and then made it to the big leagues together which was like a really really cool thing uh and those are how teams win championships it's like those dudes have been together a long time they make it up they go together like the royals did that with all their dudes when Haas and those guys came up like they they had all played together for a long time and like that's how organizations built really good young talent is that dudes like each other lived together made it and like all rooted for each other all the way through and that's like i i know all of our situations coming up like none of us have any like horror stories in the minors like we all like i lived with zach and i think the worst thing that happened was he lived in the living room in myrtle but i'm my thing is more the fam or the guys with like a wife and kid and like they have a home in florida but they're playing in iowa they're paying for their mortgage in florida while also paying for rent in iowa making a thousand bucks a paycheck and it's like that, How are those guys supposed to be able to support their families? The, guys, this? With the, the guys with the family and then the senior signs. Sorry. Yes. Man. The senior signs is ridiculous. There's guys I play with who sign for $1,000 and like $5,000. And I'll never forget, we were in um, short season in Eugene, and we were making clearing – $250 every other week. Literally. That is not – that like For five months. Day. Every two weeks every for five months. Other week. And it's like – we were fortunate enough. I mean, I didn't sign for, you know, but it's yeah. like I, I had a decent signing bonus where it was yeah. just like that was the first time I had like money in my own pockets that was not coming from my parents. Like there's more guys that made right. and then, you know, you get, right. And it's like you get taxed on that and you get basically half of what you signed for. Right. Mm. So then like when that money comes in, you're cutting. I'm not saying you're not like. Oh man, I need that two fifty to come in. But like, could you imagine guys who signed for a thousand and five thousand dollars? You signed for a fucking plane ticket, and you're making two hundred and fifty dollars every other week. How are you supposed to do anything besides eat what is ever at the field and take home peanut butter and jellies to and go? And then right go now? get a pizuki at BJ's. But that's exactly. it. Exactly. But that's it. Nothing else, and that is it. One beer in a pizuki, and it's off to bed. How yeah, many I, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches have you guys eaten in your career? Oh like, my god! Yeah, I, I mean, every that, 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 that you can't ask me because I'll voluntarily do that now. In trip, in trip, but in AAA, that was the best thing you could find on the spread. Some places was a fucking PB and J. But let me take it all the way back to the fact that college baseball has how many scholarships to go between thirty-five guys? Eleven point seven to go between thirty-five guys. So like. I went to University of Cincinnati and got a half 50% scholarship. You know, I was lucky and got 50% and was had some academic, but like dudes, like even dudes that were great players go and didn't have a scholarship, had 25%, had 50% and leave college with college debt and are making fucking five grand and 250 a week. It's like, what the fuck are we doing? And can I mean, we also- actually. Can we talk football? about football? Please stop. I'm not done ranting. Both of you, right. shut up. Sorry. You football. Everybody's on the punters on a full, the fifth punters on a full ride. Okay. And then they go and they're on the practice squad making way more money than the minor leagues ever made. Okay. Fuck. And the other thing I was going to say is that you're going to, you talk about the senior signed, you talk about the guy signing for five grand. The draft just got cut in half as well. I mean, it, went, it was, it was 10 years ago, it was 50. Then it was 40. Now it's 20. I mean, they had two years ago, they had the five round draft. I mean, they are trying to, at every point, systematically undercut minor league players. And it doesn't make any sense. And as you talked about, Ian, as well, I think the scholarship is a really good point. You talk about players having to have a certain amount of privilege, having to have a certain, having a certain amount of money just to be able to play college baseball, just to be able to play minor league baseball, just to be able to live. And that's not the kind of system baseball should want to promote where you need to be able to have a certain amount of money you grew up with or have in your family or whatever, or take out loans or whatever you have to do just to make the major leagues. And that's the system right now we have. And it doesn't, it doesn't need to be that way. And again, we're talking about such a minuscule amount of money to these teams that could change this for hundreds of guys, 180 guys a team. They could do it for $10 million a year, probably some figure around that. And they just won't. 
You can make they make that back in fucking three games. We've been ranting for a long time. Okay, I enjoy it. I really like it. I'd like to go back to the point about how minor league baseball fosters fans because you got fucking people in Iowa that can't watch 18 markets, but they'll go to the Iowa Cubs games every Friday night when the weather's over 40 degrees. Okay. Cause they'll get out once it's 50, we're excited and we're going out to watch the Iowa Cubs, but they're blacked out of 17 major markets and they can't watch any major league baseball games. What else can we bring up to get Ian just really over the edge? Again, hey, I want to go out there for the people because I know the people out there who think that we're complaining about playing baseball. It's not the case. We are no. just sharing. We are sharing it, what goes on. And it's the fairness of it. It's not yeah. like we're saying like, oh, poor us. Like, this is unbelievable. Like, we did. And it, and it's kind of like it's true. Like, we chose to play baseball. Like, I'm not right. complaining in that fact. No, it's right. just we the are fact not, that we there's very these grateful. teams. Right. Yeah. But these organizations can help, and they just say, nope, like, you're not the big leaguers. Like, we don't really care because you don't help us. More impressively, we're saying we're the lucky ones. Like, right. we yeah. are, like, we have all these stories. You know, I was super lucky, but we have all these stories about our experiences. We get it. You're we, a first rounder. We get it. Okay. Thank you. We have all these experiences that we get to share with everybody. But, like, we were the lucky ones who actually – got have made it through the system like there's we played with how many dudes and we grinded it out for three four five seven years uh and weren't able to do that and so being able to share their stories and also share ours um obviously we've been been really lucky to do this for a living but i love that tom's really fired wait just real quick before we do Sloan screen time and get people out of here, because we've been literally ranting for an hour. I still have one the, more thing. I still need to talk about the Super Bowl halftime okay. show before we go as well. Okay. But continue. But I just want to say that the most fired up of the four of us was Tom, and he's not a big leaguer or hasn't played professional baseball. So I really fucking appreciate that I Tom's fucking, more no, fired. Everybody I, at home should be as fired up as I, Tom right. is. I love that. That honestly, that got me going. Fire where, me up. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm going to say. Like, if people think we're you guys are complaining, I'm I'm just someone who's observed this working in the minors, being around the game, being a fan of minor league baseball, and it it pisses me off what they've done, what you know certain commissioners, what certain people have done to undercut the legs of minor league baseball. It's ridiculous, and I, 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 that's what gets me fired up. So Tom there, said, like, Tom said, I'm not saying names. I'm not saying names, but Scranton Wilkesbury, they're parrot clubbing up. And you know what? Hey. Certain commissioners, too. We're talking to you. Certain commissioners of the sport who have Scranton Wilkesbury in it. I'm not <laughs> saying who, and I'm not saying what sport. <laughs> it's a white little round ball they throw. I don't know. Could be anything. Would you like to rant about the uh, half game, half half game show, halftime show, or would you like to talk yeah, about the good down. things? Let's put the bar say down while we're ranting. Listen. <laughs> yeah, Ian, breathe. <laughs> All I have to say about the halftime show is, one, I thought it was the best halftime show I've ever seen because what did we grow up listening to? 50, if you enjoyed rap, 50 Cent, Dr. Dre, Eminem, Snoop, and then, like, Kendrick's more recent, like, Mary J's a legend. Like, I tweeted out that I thought it was the greatest halftime show ever. No arguments at this time. And I got 15 to 20 replies. How can you possibly think that's better than Prince? First of all, I said no arguments. Second of all, Prince, I just checked on Spotify. His last album was 1986. Do you think I fucking listened to Prince's album from 1986? No, I don't care about Prince. He, I, I don't, I don't know any of his songs. I know Purple Rain. Oh, he performed it in the rain at the Super Bowl. I don't give a shit. I didn't know him. I didn't want listen to him growing up, so I don't care. Like, cool, it's a good song, I guess. Like, I respect that he was great, but I don't give a shit. Like, that doesn't compete with what I watched last night, which was also, good as it gets. Also, there's no, and I'm gonna go on a limb and say you didn't know, but if you didn't know why 50 Cent was hanging upside down, yeah. Like grow. I don't up. want. I don't want to talk about it. Because that's the thing. My tweet got either the older people that are like, "Oh, Prince is way better," because they grew up with Prince, or the younger people being like, "These guys aren't even that good." I'm like, okay. Like, how how do you tell me you're 18 and under without telling me you're 18 and under? Like, 
like you, as soon why as why is he upside I down? I don't get it. Like I didn't know that he was. Video. I didn't you know that. Seen? I didn't know he was a part of it. So when I saw him, I was like, oh my god, that's Fifty Cent in the club. Yeah. And I grew up watching that music video like every day for like kids nowadays. They don't see music videos. No. Oh. So like as soon as that came on, I was like, wait, why is Fifty on there? I didn't know he was on there either. People are like, why is he upside down? I'm like, never heard of in the club. Right. Come on. Sorry, Ian. I know the Hap household, you guys were listening to Beethoven when you were growing up. (laughs) Ian was playing it on his violin. I was (laughs) playing it. I I thought it was an unbelievable halftime show. I I have not. I'm I'm the type of guy that's not usually impressed by the halftime show. And I was like, that's fantastic. I mean, it's no surprise the goat came last. Like, (laughs) shocker. That's right, Zach. You heard it. The no, goat. No, the goat. I told you. The best it, it, part. You know why? You know how you know Jay-Z's over it? He wasn't even there. He didn't get invited to this. I know he's from New York. Or he's from Brooklyn. That's why. I mean, he, was, he was there. He was listening. He was vibing. Hey, you know they the best part? On stage. So anybody who knows me, I have like that little dream big thing that I like, kind of joke, but really don't joke about. I love saying it. Like whenever I sign something, I'll put dream big on it. Sign something is a joke. You don't sign like real people. No, but if, no, no. Big. If I sign something for a yeah. kid, I will put dream big on it. But yeah, not, yeah, like, yeah. Yes, yes. So Jay-Z wore a shirt last night that said Dream Big on it, and I knew he was doing it for me, so that was, like, really cool. You guys are boys, huh? Yeah. You guys are boys. Yeah. But, yeah, that uh, that fired me up, people telling me Prince is better. I was like, do you think I listened to Prince? Like, his last album on Spotify, 1986. I was born in 1994. I wish you would have been online fighting people. Like, I wish you would have been on Twitter clapping because back. Because people kept, I got like 20 replies. I got a ton of, a lot of action on it. You had a lot tweet. of action on that tweet. I was way in. But I got a lot of replies saying like, nothing compares to Prince. And I had a couple being like, that halftime show sucked. I'm like, okay, like, you just don't like rap clearly. Like, oh, that's fine. But don't tell me that halftime show sucked because those are goats that were just yep. on the stage. We are graced with their presence. I'd like to say one thing before we do screen time. Snoop oh, no. just coming out in a full sweatsuit and being literally looking as comfortable as can possibly be so, is as Snoop as it gets. I was like, this fucking guy, Mary J. Blige is going to die in that outfit that she's wearing. And Snoop is wearing fucking sweats. Someone said to me today, they said, has Snoop gotten a day older in the last 25 years? Like he looks the exact same for the last 25 years. Here's a question. Who's older, Snoop or uh, Dr. Dre? Dr. Dre. Snoop. I'm like 99% sure on that. I will fact check myself. Dre is 56. Fuck, I don't like my chances anymore. No, Snoop's 50. But I don't know how you... Oops. I don't know how you knew that because Dre... Well, because Dr. Dre discovered Eminem, so I figured Dr. Dre had to be pretty established by then. And Eminem's like in his 40s. Dr. Dre must have been pretty, pretty good at his craft. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's I mean, your screen he, time? He's he's discovered some of the greats of all time and the health problems he had to go out there, too. But he didn't. But like he that? didn't. But he didn't discover print. So is he really that good? Shut up. <laughs> Gosh. And I'm not trying <laughs> to say print is bad. And I, I need to clarify because I'm going to have people be like, this guy doesn't respect old, good old music. Like, I just don't listen to Prince. I'm not saying he's bad, but don't come at me with somebody I don't listen to because it was. 40 years ago, his last album. Rest in peace. Sorry. Sloan, screen time. Thank you for 456. To- that's got to be a W. Let's Thank go. Thank you for what listening you to our back? rant. It's been a great episode. I love Sloan because they do toilet exactly. flushers and higher. they do faucets oh, and they do anything that you need. Sloan. Sloan. Zach, what's yours? Six hours and two minutes. Woo! That's bad. I'm Wait, what's yours? Day. What's yours, Dakota? Oh. Wow, mine was. She was working today. all day. She was working all day. Four fifty two. Oh that, no, but hour behind me. Yeah, no, behind. no, 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 no. Tom, 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 Tom. What is yours? Tom thirty six. You're the loser. On Valentine's Day, so you're single now. Yeah, that's that's messed up, dude. You should have been spending time. She was working. Ian, she didn't spend Ian, time if anything, me. though, that's a really high screen time for you today, too. It was a high screen time. I was on my phone a lot. <laughs> We need Ian to drink Farsight every single episode to get this energy. Why are you quiet now, Dakota? Yeah, you got a messed up mic now. Sorry, I it's got a good time to end the episode. Thanks, everybody, for joining. That was your Sloan screen time. Uh, 
just don't forget that if we start spring training on time, it'll be played at Sloan Park in Mesa, Arizona. Everybody have a great week. We have episode 99, the big 99 coming up next week. Maybe a guest, maybe not. And then uh, episode 100 where we have no clue what we're going to do, but it's going to be a big part of it.